so one reason I, I appreciate you, there are a number of reasons I appreciate you, Sarah, and admire you. But one is that you spent uh, probably uh, the equivalent of years um, spending, spending time in different communities around America trying to unpack people's experiences. And then you responded uh, trying to unify through kindness and understanding which is really such the opposite of, the, of like the customary approach that, that people seem to have, particularly in like the, the kind of cycles of social media and the, the rest of it. I just saw it as such an uplifting quest on your part. And, and, the, and the fact that you could actually do that in like a you know, major platform and the, and the way that you did, I thought was very, very singular. Like I thought to myself, I was like, is there anyone else who could... Uh, pull this off at this level and I could not think of a soul except for you. Yang! Thank you. I just, yeah, I mean, it was definitely, I wanted to challenge myself to say, like, I really want to I ch- try to do comedy that has heart, that is still hard comedy, like still, you know, and um, and I also think we're we're all connected and i i don't think we're as different as we feel because we're being separated by misinformation i also feel like it 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 isn't progress like if i consider myself progressive progress is to change so like i'm wrong a lot and i love changing i don't feel I, it's exciting to me, you know, when I go, oh, nope, I've got to say, you know, like, re- remember the new words, the new pronouns, the new whatever, you know, like, I even see my boyfriend going like, yeah, I met with this girl woman today, you know, and it's those little things, just seeing the, that there's an awareness in his head clicking off, you know, from just what is so ingrained in us is I find that stuff exciting, you know, but there is that thing online and it so often comes from the left of just wanting to draw a line in the sand and point to you as wrong and get to point to me as right we get so excited to be right and point to someone who's wrong and and i i know i participated in it as well but i try to remember to if do we want people to be changed or do we just want to be able to point to them as wrong and ourselves as right you know like it's just like well remember well four years ago this person said this but you know neil brennan has the best joke about this the his analogy is like somebody going up to lebron james and going we have a picture of you when you're 14 and you're only 5'2 i'm like (laughs) well but i grew yeah but is this true is this your picture are you 5'2"? You know. LeBron was never 5'2". Blasphemy, not kidding. I know. I should have said 5'9". Or you took the harder approach. I think that that's part of why I appreciated and admired it so much. You tried to build bridges of understanding with people who had you know, a different um, worldview or a different political sense. Uh, and I think we really needed that. Uh, we still need it. You know, like that there is still such like a uh, divide, uh, and it is getting worse, not better for a variety of reasons. And I see you as one of like the few people that tried to tackle it in a meaningful, personal way that actually invested, you know, years of your life in it. Um, it, it's something that I feel like I can relate to because like I undertook a similar mission, um, in, you know, in a political realm. Um, and, no, to the extent that like I, I made a contribution, I'm really proud. Um, but I feel like you've been doing the same kind of work for years. And when I look at folks who are trying to do it, like there aren't that many. <laughs> like, like it's not like a, a huge legion uh, of, of folks who actually are um, trying to understand people who have completely differing um, politics or, or worldviews. Yeah, and it takes so little to connect. I mean, you went from town to town and you talk to people and you connect. I always say like, um, when friends go, I, I can't even talk to this part of my family. They're, you know, these Trump, Q, whatever, crazy conspiracy. And I go, uh, do they watch Walking Dead? You know, I don't know, like, it, you know, it, there's always something. And once you connect, 
they're more open. We're more open. Well, we're all more open and we were primed for change, you know, but it, to just be like, I do notice on the right, like the thing that they're most closed about is like feeling judged, you know? Have you read uh, Jonathan Haidt's work? I feel like you would love it uh, if you haven't. No. Um, he, he wrote a book called The Righteous Mind that talks about the way that uh, conservatives and, and liberals have uh, different moral palettes. Uh, and I, I think you would love it where he, he talks about how there are um, six universal values. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. It's uh, caring fairness, liberty, loyalty, authority, and sanctity. And progressives naturally skew towards caring and fairness, and conservatives naturally skew towards loyalty, authority, and sanctity. And then we construct liberty in different ways, either personally or, or societally. But look at loyalty and authority. They're so connected to fear. Oh, yeah. Conservatism corresponds to things like threat sensitivity and disgust reflex, <laughs> where, where, where like if, if you uh, if you generally are like, you know, turned off by disgusting scenes or like uh, di different types of uh, uh, even food, um, you're more likely to be conservative. Really? Yeah. And, and uh, appetite for novelty corresponds to liberalism, where if you just like new stuff, <laughs> you're more likely to be politically liberal. I, I read a study that when you're in a state of fear, you no matter who you are, you make more conservative choices. And that's why, you know, um, the right uses fear, you know, the, the caravans coming or whatever they need to create to make their followers malleable instead of be curious, question things, be interested, fight that human fear against the unknown, you know? And it, it is true that works on liberals too, where we give more conservative responses after you scare us. <laughs> you know, like, 100%. It, it, it's just a, it's a, you know, it's a pretty universal impulse. We also apparently get a bit more conservative as we age. Yeah. And we have to try to fight that though. Because you get set in your ways and set in your ways means conservative. Yeah, it, it's, um, I mean, you know, I, I looked at myself, it's like, I, you know, I feel like that hasn't really happened to me as yet, but uh, who knows, man, you know, we're still young. <laughs> I mean, it happens to me in that, like, all I want to do at night is, like, watch a Columbo and go to sleep. Yeah, I've become, like, old in that way. But when I hear, like, comics go, oh, we have to learn all these new words, or we can't, I can't use this word, or I have to be sensitive to this topic, I can't say anything. You know, I go, well, that's what old people are like. You know what I mean? Like, you can't embrace new things. You can't think of new words. You can't think of something else to say than, you know, like, I I've used this a lot, this example a lot, but I used to defend saying gay. Oh, that's so gay. Because I, I go, oh, I'm from the Boston area. It's I have gay friends. It's not, you know, I and then one day I just heard myself and I was like, well, uh, you know, what, I, I, I I'm the guy who goes, what? I say colored. I have colored friends. You know, like, I'm him? And you're like, I don't want to be that person. Yeah, surely I have other words. I, I, I've, I'm a, I'm a, my job is words. I can think of other things in two seconds. And then, yeah, it's so odd, that instinct to want to stay the same. Jonathan Haidt's research really um, opened my mind in a different way. Um, and... When I traveled the country, like I had an experience that did verify a lot of what you just said, which is like, if you actually talk about the things that people want for themselves, their families, uh, the things they enjoy, like we, we have more in common than not. It's just that right now there are, <coughs> are massive forces that actually, unfortunately, make more money uh, pitting us against each other. That's what it is. Clicks. Yeah, a lot of it's clicks. Um, some of it's cable news and, and cable news ratings. Yeah. If you have a 24-hour news channel, that's not news. They have to fill content and they need to keep you to, you know, uh, through the commercial to come on the other side. It's That's entertainment. You know, I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, 
yeah, obviously Fox News, but, you know, MSNBC, anything that's 24 hours is going to be, uh, is going to have um, bait. <laughs>